Welcome, everybody, to Make It Make Sense. I'm your host, Monique Presley, and I'm excited, as always, just to be with you guys, to be able to do what we try to do every single day on this show, Make It Make Sense, give you the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, the how, and and expertise, right? Bringing in experts in every possible field, the best of the best, and man, this week has been no exception. We got an update this week from Dr. Georges Benjamin uh, about the status of COVID in the United States and why we cannot afford to ignore it. And we had all kinds of just big boss energy flowing in and through the room on Wednesday. Um, and if you didn't get to see that show, go to my YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Monique Presley TV. We had Rachel Nordlinger, um, communication strategist extraordinaire, among so many other things, but just a really great conversation with her. And now, now, I can't be more excited. We have Crystal McCurry McGuire uh, as first time guest to the show. You know, I, I'm not going to do, I, I couldn't do her whole bio justice. If you read my post, you'll see lots of interesting things about her, you know, but she was in the law biz like me and then left law biz to become full-time um, award-winning producer and New York Times bestselling author and you name it, she she's she's done it. And a philanthropist, uh, she and her family are committed to bettering everyone uh, in their community, in the country, in the world. Um, you, you just have to watch her work and you will be in awe as I am. And, you know, I mean, maybe she'll tell us some other exciting things that she's had up in her career in recent years. But we especially want to talk about this new endeavor that she is teaming up with her son, V. Cole Anthony, in order to do to help things be easier for parents who are in this this basketball biz, because it is a business. Um, but anyway, that's enough from me. Please help me welcome dear sister extraordinaire, Crystal McCrary McGuire. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And it's great to to be able to interface and see, we had to do a whole interview just to be able to interface in person. <laughs> I know, right? We, um, it's nice to get some real FaceTime, not a text, not a, you know, a, a comment on Instagram, but wonderful to see your beautiful smile on this. Uh, I don't know where you are, but it's raining where I am, but still feels quite bright to be here with you this afternoon. So thank you so much for having me, Monique. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm happy to have you. I'm in D.C. and thankfully it's sunny right now. I've got to travel in a bit. I'm going to do our interview and then grab bags and run for the airport. So I'm bored. Where are you going? Let it be smooth. I'm going for an appointment with the Queen Bee. I'm headed to Vegas. <laughs> oh, amazing. Amazing. Have you, is it your first time seeing Renaissance? It's going to be my first time seeing Renaissance. It's going to be my first time in Vegas. I'm a Vegas virgin. What? Unbelievable. You've never been to Vegas? Not one single time. The The closest I've done is a, is going through the airport, changing planes. I mean, it's insane. And I said I would do it for my 50th and we had a whole pandemic. And so my 50th came and went with with people taking swabs and us having an outdoor small party. So we're catching up now. It's like a group of six girlfriends of mine who've all had 50th birthdays recently and we're all going and I'm excited and everybody is now there except for nice. So I'm bringing in the rear. You're going to have a blast. And I, I know you have seen Queen Bee perform before, right? Okay. Yeah, well, I haven't I, I haven't missed a concert recently, so but I'm I'm excited, and um, this album has meant a lot to me. I think we all have maybe gone through our own kind of personal renaissance and felt some freedom, which of course is the point of art, right? Um, which right. you know a lot about, and I don't even know where to start with you, Crystal, because I think that um, you really for me and what I've been able to watch um, from a distance of you having a firm grasp on your own individuality while you also do lots of things for people you love. And I think as women, that's 
that's that's a heavy lift um, to figure out. Yeah, I'm mom, but I'm also career. I'm also um, philanthropist. I'm I'm also woman. You know, I'm I'm woman with girlfriends, and I know that you care a lot about spending time with with girlfriends as well. And I saw on this show, I don't know if you've heard of it, and just like that, um, there was this character who was talking in last week's episode. It's this wonderful character played by Nicole Art Parker. I don't know if you know anything about what I'm talking about. Yes. But she was ta- she was talking about like thinking it was her turn. You know, when we go through and we've got the kids and we do and she and there there was I'm not gonna tell anybody the storyline, but there was a storyline that made her say I thought this was about to be my time, right. you know, with my award-winning documentary and where kids are, are in control and where husband's not running for office and all of the things. It seems like that character is so familiar to somebody. I know. Why is that, Crystal? Wow. Well, well first of all, um, thanks for bringing up And Just Like That and um, the incredible character that Nicole Ari Parker plays. Uh, it's just a host of women, Black women um, in my circle and beyond that have contributed to creating that character, one of them being the extraordinary writer, showrunner, author, Susan Fales Hill. Um, Susan Fales Hill, if you don't know who she is, look, she, look her up, but she is one of the senior writers on And Just Like That, but she was a writer on The Cosby Show. She was created a different world um and she's also an author of a few incredible um auto one autobiographical autobiographical book but in any event back to the nicole ari parker character and and just like that i mean i think that she is a character that many women can identify with in particular um mothers um working women um spouses partners wives that you get to a certain point in your life and you say phew you know uh, and I don't want to give away the storyline either, but just the the challenges that women face and the choices that women oftentimes have to make that their 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 spouses or partners or husbands don't have to make. Uh, and I think that um, it was written in such a a complex but relatable way. Um, so I I recommend everyone who has not seen and just like that go and see um, this top-notch writing and um, first-rate acting by all the cast, but in particular here for Nicole Ari Parker. And my girlfriends and I have really enjoyed it. You know, there were so many people who were thinking it was going to be like a Sex in the City reboot. And I love Sex in the City. And some of my fondest memories are getting together with my girlfriends. Um, and we would pick a different person's apartment or house each week. And the person whose place it was would cook and we would enjoy each other and drink wine and then watch and talk through it and laugh through it and cuss through it and all the things. And so, but when it came back, people thought more of the same with like less characters, more characters, new characters. But, um, though it has held on to some of the essence of it, I think what has been done with the infusion, not just of color, but of culture, um, of depth. So hats off absolutely for the writing and the important and nuanced conversations. It's amazing to me how much they've been able to get accomplished and it still be entertaining. And it happened in that short amount of time. And it kind of just, to me, disproves the notion that you cannot cover these issues while still being entertaining and funny and stylish and and trendy um but for us for our age range right. i mean to me it is beautiful work that's been sure done. well i think that what they um the writers are particularly effective with and just like that is showing the organic evolution of these women in their world and so you loved them in Sex in the City, um, in fairness, and were in honesty, shall I say, we were missing in Sex in the City a, you know, main black woman character, right? That just, you know, particularly, you know, on the art scene, um, we know women um, 
and men in New York City on the art scene, they're they're filled with people of color. I mean, the, the director of the Studio Museum in Harlem, Thelma Golden, who at the time, you know, had was at the, at the Whitney Museum and and curated the black male exhibit and so many extraordinary um, people on the black art scene or just the art scene period in New York. And so I think what this new iteration of Sex in the City and Just Like That. It shows the evolution of these women, but it also is more reflective of the reality of of diversity in New York City, in the art world, in the world of finance, in the world of filmmaking, media. Yeah, absolutely. And it's beautiful to see. I mean, it, it's quite it's quite literally a beautiful tapestry to to watch um, and to enjoy. Uh, and so hats off to all of you because I know that's you too, uh, who are responsible for enabling us to grow in that way and to see ourselves and to be and to be sexy in, in our 50s. Oh, and in our 60s. Yeah. Um, and for it to be 50, 50 really, no, I'm, I'm serious. 50 is the new 75. Seriously. I mean, I know so many 50, 60 year old women who you're looking at them. I mean, embracing their maturity, but just in terms of their um, zest for life, their joie de vie, their their sense of adventure, and and continuing to grow and experience the world. I mean, fifty, you know, thirty years ago, twenty five years ago, parents are thinking about retirement. You know, I know women and men for that matter, but who are starting new careers, new ventures in their 50s, in their 60s. I mean, my mom, who's 97 years old, whose mind is incredibly sharp and crisp, her body's slowing down a little bit. Um, I, I think that it's so inspiring and so necessary, uh, particularly in our images that we see in the media, that we continue to evolve also with... Um, Let's not let ageism creep in in the roles that um, women actors get in particular. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I think a lot of it is conditioning. Uh, we were conditioned that you work and work and work and your goal in working is to get to retirement. And then in retirement, you go off and sit down somewhere and try to enjoy life. And and the the what we are feeling now and what I see more and more people embracing is no, I'm enjoying all of it. Like I work at something that I enjoy. I, I, I move through the earth doing things that I love doing. And why would I ever stop? Why would I ever stop? I don't have to do the same thing. You know, and I don't have to run the same pace necessarily, but for me, I mean, the next thing is the most exciting, like the show, you know, who gets up and decides, Oh, okay. So what we'll do now right. is start a daily show so we can help people make things make sense. But it's a passion place um, for me. And I do believe that as we get further along and more experienced, our work and our expertise and our passion can all combine to give things into the earth. And that's what I see with you. I got one more question before we talk about game up. Because I know people are watching and they're going to watch on YouTube and they're going to be thinking, okay, um, but how? Because I meet women all the time who, and the, the for real, the one question they ask, it more, more so than why or when, is how, how do you do you? Like, how did you get to the space where you gave yourself permission to be all kinds of different things at the same time? And, and how do you meet hey, a um, elementary school principal in Detroit, Michigan, um, at a public school where there were 40 kids in the classroom and not an assistant teacher. And I saw her get up and go to work every day, first cooking us breakfast, <laughs> then making lunch for my dad who worked at Ford Motor Company, then making sure that we got picked up from school, had dinner prepared. I mean, going out to dinner like that. I don't think that I ever went out to dinner at a restaurant. Uh, we would go on vacations, but when we were at home in Detroit, Michigan, we weren't going out to dinner. It was a home cooked meals. And then involved a, a Sunday school teacher, played the piano, involved the Delta Sigma Theta um, sorority member, and, and just did lots of volunteer work in the community. 
So I really had her as an example of hard work. Um, she didn't make it look like work. I realize now <laughs> that it was that that all of that was yeah. work. I mean, she was running business in running our household and taking care of me and my sister. But in terms of my personal journey, um, you know, I would say uh, I feel like I have been very blessed with one having that foundation of, of my parents, which I'd say more than anything, their greatest gift to me um, has been the gift of kindness and integrity. You know, Ed worked for Ford Motor Company for 40 years. And when he retired, he got these business cards made with his name on it. Um, but beneath his name, he had just a nice guy. Yeah. And that, the joke yeah. for that for him is, is like, oh, I go to these functions with your mom. And there are all these guys handing out these business cards with these fancy titles, CEO of this and president of this and did it of this. And he was like, for me, just, just a nice guy. And it was sort of like poking fun of that. And I will say I, I have carried that through in how I try to approach life and how I've tried to raise um, um, our children. And um, but but what they've also given me, they've given me exposure. We did travel when I was younger and a sense of 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 intellect intellectual curiosity and this drive that i just have to say it is it is a blessing i i can't think of anything else other than um god has instilled in me this drive and this curiosity um to continue to explore and to push my boundaries and i um have been also raised to, if you start something, you finish it. And so the different um, creative endeavors that I've been through, yes, I was a lawyer, I practiced entertainment law in New York City at this incredible firm, Paul Weiss Rifkin. I one day said I'd rather be the client than the lawyer because I was fortunate enough to, to represent mm -hmm. an array of incredible people from playwrights to authors to choreographers, et cetera. And I one day left and said, I'm gonna start writing. You know, did you did did Home Court Advantage with Rita Ewing? You know, wrote um, Gotham Diaries with Tiny Lewis Lee. Inspiration um, profiles of Black women changing our world with Nathan Hale Williams, and and then went on to be able to produce um, several TV shows under the BET umbrella, from Leading Women to Leading Men, where we profiled Black and white um, Black men and Black women who've impacted the country socially, politically, culturally, artistically. And then done some, did a, a doc on the Studio Museum in Harlem. And it, and then did Little Ballers uh, with, um, for Nickelodeon, uh, which was, you know, showed us that black boys aren't monolithic and that everybody has a dream. And um, followed my son Cole's AAU team in fifth grade. And so I just, I, I'm, I'm just listing those because each of those endeavors represents a collaboration, an opportunity, um, curiosity artistic curiosity and um a commitment to see it through and and tell this story mm -hmm. and um and that has been and that has been a an incredible um blessing i i, I don't know el how else to to put it i mean i just it, it's funny i love i love the play hamilton I, I and and one of the songs in hamilton and and my my 10 year old son he's like my my broadway buddy he goes to all the plays with me but um you know the song where Hamilton um, is is singing. Um, I'm never satisfied. You know, but satisfied in so far as wanting to always push. Yes. Never resting on the last project. Yes. Always wanting to see how can I how can I push the envelope? How can I how can I educate? How can I mean I've done like it just made me think of one of my most favorite projects that I've ever worked on. Um, Cheryl and Eiffel um, hired me some years ago when she was still at the Legal Defense Fund. Now Janae Nelson's there, the head of LDF. And I've done five short documentaries on the Legal Defense Fund, which okay, is, I I, yes, I, I have to, they're, they're on my website, com. And you know, as a lawyer, a lawyer who also has done work in the civil rights space that the Legal Defense Fund, they are the civil rights legal architects of America. Oh, somebody said they didn't know how to sing voice. I could sing some more, but <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, but but all that to say, um, how do I do it? How do I? I mean, I think part of this was there was a level of like like pivoting 
as as at a certain place in your life and in your in your career. And um, I've just had a sense of um, you know never back down. And when I get an idea, you know, I I just sink my teeth into it and I don't let go until I execute it to um, its completion. Amen. Amen. And, and, you know, everybody doesn't have the same capacity, but it's beautiful when you see people who have great capacity living up to all of it, you know, pushing out everything that God put in. And um, it's a joy to watch you do that. I try to describe for people, I don't, I, I, I wish I could bottle and sell the thing that makes it click, you know, be, because I, I know that there's so much beauty for anybody who can tap into this is why I'm on this earth. Right. And cure all the things that I could do on this earth. Um, and this speaking of next- discovering that continually discovering that and, and leaning into that and growing with that, that is one of the great gifts of living. Amen. Amen. Speaking of great gifts, you, you have this, the, you have these great children and you have formed a, a venture with one of them. Um, which is called Game Up in my field in the sports world, which you know for sure, for sure. Um, but tell us in what way it will do that. And also tell me, like, is it scary, freak out scary to be in the world of tech? Because when 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 the creatives and the and the sports folks get in with with the tech people, that's a, that's a mashup. Um, but it seems like a whole new world. Like, I feel like I would be completely Oh, it's a total, it's a total mashup, but incredibly thrilling. Um, so Game Up. Game Up came out of me being a sports mom. All of my kids have played an array of sports, primarily basketball. My 10-year-old plays basketball. Um, he's going into fifth grade. My 21-year-old daughter, she played basketball throughout high school, won a New York State championship with her school, and was co-player of the year in New York. She's now a rising junior at Harvard. She no longer plays basketball, but she does volunteer work with kids, teaching them to play basketball up at Harvard. And then um, my eldest son, Cole, who's 23, he plays in, in the NBA for a team called the Orlando Magic for the non-sports people out there. I do not assume that anybody knows, um, but he played at every level of basketball from the time he was, was four years old. And so how Game Up came about was for the past decade plus, I'm like, I'm that sports mom. I'm that basketball mom. I have, that's kind of how the, the little ballers came about. I said, I wanted to follow these amazing young kids around um, and, and film them and tell their story. Really, parents have been calling me, texting me, DMing me now for years saying, can you please make a recommendation of where my kid should play basketball what program would be good for them what developmental program what competitive team what intermediate team and so I was talking to parents um and sometimes in the case kids older like the older kids about programs that would work for them just because of my experience you know and I began aggregating all of this information and I said why don't we turn it into an app and from that point, I, I got that mind in my head. I, I talked to Cole about it. I actually talked to all my kids about it, but I talked to Cole about it because Cole really represents that example yeah. of a player who, who started at a youth basketball program in New York City called Yorkville with kids who'd never picked up balls before, right? And, and went through every level of basketball program up and, and was not, Frequently was not the best on his team, but went through every level of, of basketball team up through, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, and now the NBA. And so I said, let me take that information, turn into an app, which became Game Up. And so how Game Up works is um, people can go to the app, and it, which launches on September 10th at our City Assist event, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Parents go to the app. They put in their kids' age the city they live in, their gender, and the and the app will come back with, these are the results we found for you. 
They will um, organize them by location. They will organize them by skill. They will organize them by what the needs and wants and goals are of that parent for their kid, of that kid for themselves. And that is free. And it is helping to um, have parents and kids navigate the youth basketball landscape. We're starting out in the tri-state area, a little beyond that, because we'll be in Massachusetts, we'll be in Connecticut, Pennsylvania, but we're going to take it up and down the East Coast and across the U.S. to youth basketball hubs across the country by the end of 2024. Uh, it's, it's free, but then there's a premium portion of it where parents can get a basketball concierge. The first session's free, like a basketball or like think about a Think about a high school or college consultant for parents uh, or think about a, a job consultant where the parents can actually talk to the um, concierge who can walk them through what, like, is this a team that's reliable? Is it, how much money is this going to cost? What, is my kid going to actually play on this team? What would be the goal of trying to get my kid on this team? Is it going to get them into you know, some parents want their kids to just be able, or the kid just wants to be able to say, I made my varsity team in high school. I don't care if I'm the 14th gal on the bench. I just want to make my team. Yep. Right. Some parents, you know, I talk to a lot of parents who are like, my kid's playing because we're playing for a college education. Yeah. All reasons, incredibly um, understandable, valid. Every parent is doing it for different reasons. Every kid is doing it. But at the end of the day, I hope that they're doing it because they really love this game and understand the importance of um, the the value that organized sports can bring for their kids. Wow, that's um, you know, I'm a parent of three, and so j just my head is spinning even as you're talking because um, it can be a racket, you know. And so that's what I love about you doing it and your son doing it because you can add quality controls that people wouldn't otherwise get and you're not going to recommend things that aren't vetted uh, and so that will can make an incredible difference um, in the way that people go about doing it because there are all kinds of like the emails I get because I've got what my you know my daughter um, who is a rising senior is in musical theater and I have had to hire a consultant because she wants to do you know BFA and go that track. So I'll be in New York a lot very soon. Um, but on the sports side, she she is in track and field. My son's in football. And the emails that I get from people say, we can help you. We can help you. You need this. You need this. And of course, there's always a dollar sign attached to it. And you don't know on your own whether it's actually quality advice or helper consulting that they're providing. And you don't know whether your kid even needs it or not. So I love that you're kind of checking all of those boxes. Yes. For people. The goal really is to um, demystify um, the youth basketball landscape for for parents. And you're right. There, there are a lot of programs that, you know, aren't what they actually represent themselves to be, won't necessarily meet your kid's needs. And as you mentioned, the dollar sign, a lot of these programs that are totally legitimate and good programs, whether a developmental program um, for a, a five, six-year-old or whether a team that are dues associated with it, they're expensive. Yeah. And so there is, let me share this with you, there is a scholarship component which led Cole and I to start the 50 Ways Foundation Game Up Scholarship. 50 Ways Foundation is Cole's foundation that is dedicated to um, helping youth on and off the court. So what we're doing, we're launching Game Up officially on Sunday, September 10th at the Police Athletic League in Harlem. And we're having there, we've partnered with Empire Invitational, which is a credible invitational that was was to play. We're going to have um, free um, skills clinics for kids. It's a community event. And we're going to have the youth basketball fair. Again, a la college fair or a la job fair, where several of the teams that are on the Game Up platform are going to be there sharing with parents 
information about their teens. And the parents who want to get their kids in these various developmental programs or want their kids to try for these teams who have a financial barrier to having their kids enter these programs or join these teams, that is what the 50 Ways Game Up Foundation is for, to help those parents pay for those costs so there is no economic barrier for parents getting their kids into these programs that are going to be transformative for their lives. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I, I, I appreciate that. Just wait, even even in the DMV, just be just knowing that people in your area are going to be able to get this type of service um, and, and for there to be aid to people who need it, because so many things, I mean, I don't have to tell you, Crystal, like I'm thankful that my children have every possible advantage. But the more that we are out and see it's it's quite obvious the difference between the parents who are able to provide that to their children and where their children end up and the ones who aren't. And it's not a talent difference and it's not an intellectual difference. You know, it's really a difference in what people can afford. So Great. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's it, it's so much of it comes down to the resources, yeah. the resources in the communities they live in. And we know that there are just a lot of communities that are um resource deprived on a whole host of levels right we don't have to we, we know that we don't do like healthcare, housing education etc um and 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 to that end you know several of the programs that are on the platforms um of, on the game up platform they're not many of them are not just about basketball you know like for instance riverside hawks which is a great um Bas youth basketball program, their tenant is really the ABCs of basketball, academics, basketball, community. And they have um, mentors and they have tutors and they have test prep, a part of their program. And there are many programs, New Heights, RENs. I mean, we can go through that list. And again, this is information that parents are able to get on their um on their um uh, when they when they come on when they come on the app and the other thing i want to say is several people have asked me um is the app just for elite players or is it absolute the game up is for every level of player as i said from age like four we have programs even three as young as three that we have on the app up through 18 years old and every level of player and um uh, every socioeconomic group as well uh, can can come to this app and hopefully find what they need. You can also come and find a trainer on the app. I mean, the ultimate goal of Game Up is to be the um, youth sports destination because I am going to expand into sports outside of basketball as a as a resource, as a sounding board of of curated and vetted teams, trainers, programs, resources. That's Fantastic. So I know that there is going, there's already um, an, an IG handle for Game Up and it's launching in September, but where else can people find information? You can go to, well, when it launches, it's going to be um, gameup.fyi. That is going to be the handle. Um, we're going to roll out all of that information, but um, right now you can go to um, my Instagram page, my son Cole Anthony, you can go to the Game Up Instagram page. Uh, but day of September 10th, up in Harlem, it's going to be turned up at the Police Athletic League, which, by the way, shout out to them. They serve, PAL serves over 15,000 kids in the New York City area. And we thank letting us use their facility to to launch game up and have these incredible games and clinics and there's also i said high school there's going to be a middle school all-star game too which i thought i'd mention for the for the younger players and it's boys and girls and whoever wants to come um everyone is everyone is welcome and um you know we just hope we you know at the end of the day we really want to um we want to keep kids safe we want to keep kids engaged yeah keep them mentally emotionally physically healthy and uh, aim up if game up can play a small part in that in helping families then uh, our work will be done well thank you to you crystal thank you to cole this is a fantastic idea this, this time has come and i know that it's going to be supremely successful 
Um, you guys are welcome back here anytime to talk about that or anything else you want to talk about, oh, Wonder Woman, anything else you want to talk about. Well, you know, let me say one other thing while I am here. Uh, another um, give back that my son Cole is involved in was founded by it's happening this Sunday in New York City. I'll, I'll, I'll post it. It's all over Instagram, but it's the back to school give back that Bryce Council, his business partner and him, they are having a celebrity basketball game again, free free they're giving out school supplies backpacks there's going to be food and ice cream truck like i don't know if it's Derek queen but i will be there with that but they're going to have some really incredible players playing in that game cole's going to be playing and you know just shout out to uh um couch yourself in and, and and bryce council and cole for doing the back to school uh give back this sunday new york city uh, all for the all for the kids Monique, you know it's about the kids it's about our future it is amen and and they deserve every bit that we can can pour back into you know we talk so many days on the show about the poor state of affairs it's beautiful to be able to also talk about the people who care enough to do something about it so that we can try right now i'm like i'm like lord am i gonna leave my kids better um in a in a better world because it's we're trending wrong direction seems yeah. that's why we fight and that's why we work um and we certainly thank you crystal mccrory mcguire for your work for that of your husband for that of your family for everything that you do um and continue to do for us so thank you so much for sharing with us today we appreciate you. thank you so much for having me on this was uh will, will take me into my weekend feeling um inspired and uplifted and continue to do the work you're doing showcasing the spectrum of us amen, amen. thank you have a great weekend enjoy by beyonce count on it <laughs> all right so guys um please hearts on the screen thank you so much for joining me um and for hearing from this wonderful spectacular woman and i'm going to talk just for a couple of more minutes crystal if you want to click your x off then i will give them some closing notes um thank you so much um i i admire um what she does for sure but more so who she is uh, and I hope that the amount of time that she spent unselfishly with us today can can give you just an inkling. Um, one of the things that I loved is that she shared about so many of the projects that she has worked on. Because you know what? As women, we are conditioned and trained to not do what others would consider tooting our own horn. But we really do have to let the record reflect. Uh, the good works that we have done and the opportunities that we've been given and the opportunities that we've given others. Uh, and that levels the playing field because then when you hear from her what she's been able to do, I know I'm inspired. I'm, I'm inspired to go back to the drawing board and figure out what else I can put on there uh, in the same way. So I hope that you enjoyed that. It's Freedom Friday and I feel freer. I definitely do. Uh, in in listening to her share with us so please support follow her if you're not following her support the things that she's doing go to her website and and look up her her works if you haven't um seen any of her docs or or films or projects that she's worked on please do go and do that and share with somebody about game up because this really is a groundbreaking tool that i know that parents need that I wish we had had sooner and and could use um, in so many different areas. So the fact that she's doing it is fantastic. Um, have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend. I will be back with you again on Monday to help you make it make sense. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do Money Presley TV. And if you want to support us through giving, please do. You can advertise with us by emailing at sales at moneypresley.com. And you can also um, give. You can you can give to support the work that we're doing here on Make It Make Sense. If you find it valuable, you can do it through Cash App uh, at dollar sign Moni Presley TV or PayPal.me forward slash Moni Presley TV. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye bye.